Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to episode two of They Hunger. Obviously, this is the second chapter of the three that were released. Um, this is, like I said, using the Trilogy Collection, so running through Steam. Um, as always, links in the description for everything, even though I highly doubt you're going to watch the playlist on this specific episode, but you never know. Um, I don't really like episode two as much. I think it's a little bit too scripted. There's not as much combat and exploration. I like the actual level design, though. We'll get into it as usual, but... You know, also, I'd like to point out, this is the day later after my first one. So, <laughs> if my voice sounds different, it's because my roommate has, like, a slight proto-cold. And, uh, so do I, apparently. Um, I don't think it's anything serious. This is, like, day three for her. She's fine now. She's at work. Um, I'm fine. I'm at home. So, anyways... If I sound slightly different, that's probably why. And then plus I have a massive, like, swelling on my eye because I bang my head into something in my sleep. I don't know. Oh boy. And right off the bat, we're fucking starting off strong. Get the hell out of this thing. And, uh, that is actually a friendly Barney. Now, first things first, I don't like this expansion, whatever you want to call it, episode as much. Because, in my opinion, it's just... A little too scripted, you know what I mean? Like, there's way too many, like, things you have to do in certain sequences to make the uh, plot progress, which I... I can commend it. I get it. It's more, you know, story, but it's just... I don't know. So you gotta start off pretty heavy here. We gotta go straight back into where we were in the in ending of the last episode. Sadly, these American switches don't work anymore, so... Yeah, you can explore a little bit around the place, and there's the, uh, the douchebag, uh, I want to call him Roscoe Pico Train, but I know that's not his name. That's just the dude from Dukes of Hazard. I'm pretty sure. Um, actually, it's P. Cole Train. It's, like, two separate, like, things. I used to have a dog named Roscoe. It was fucking awesome. I don't know who this unlawfully large person is, but he's wanted. So we can go ahead and get our crowbar, or our umbrella, whatever you want to call it. And there's a lot more scripting in this, like I was saying. Um, there's a lot more things you have to do in a certain order in order for the game to actually advance. Like I said, I don't hate that. I just don't think it's very good. It kind of leads to some really iffy sort of situations. I'm actually going to kill this Barney because I want his gun. Um, I know that's terrible, but uh, trust me, you want as much as you can. So we have the umbrella again. However, this is, you know, episode two of the well-loved... They Hunger Trilogy. So, of course, new stuff is going to get added, and we're going to get a couple new melee weapons here and there. Also, keep in mind that area right there, because you're going to have to go back there a little bit later. I don't know if you guys like my voice like this. I sure as hell don't like it, because I have asthma, so everything I'm saying is, like, pushing even harder on my lungs. But I don't have, like, a... I mean, I can do a nice, solid cough here. It's more like... <coughs> like... So you can see my lungs aren't full of fluid or anything. It's just like a protocol. I think it's allergy related, honestly. Um, I don't really have like the sniffs, if you get that, if you get what I mean. Like, I just don't think it's like COVID or anything. I'm actually fully vaccinated as well. And if I do get it, it's very minor, but I don't know. So we have the wrench now, by the way, the wrench is way fucking better than the uh, piss ass uh, umbrella. And there's a lot of reasons for that is Look at the speed. I'm going to show you guys why this is so good. It stunlocks zombies so fucking quick that there is no chance for them to attack you, basically. As soon as you've got this thing locked into something, it's it's done. It's not coming back. So, now we do have to go into there to activate this area here. I'll show you exactly why I'm talking about the wrench is so damn good. Look at this! It fucking just shreds through everything. It's incredible. It's way better than the next melee weapon we're going to pick up in this episode. I personally would say just stick to this. Now, in terms of design, I don't really think this holds up as well as the first episode. It's still really cool. It's actually got a hell of a lot of atmosphere. It's one of the few times in a uh, mod or anything that I actually jumped the first time I played it. Because it's so well built up to. If you've played this, you might know what I'm talking about. Actually, hang on. Uh, default FOV 110. If you're ever curious, I prefer 110 to 100 for my FOV. I've played Quake for so many fucking years that this is the only way I know how to look at video games anymore. 
So, I will say, on a scale of, like, 1 out of 10, this is still a very high, like, 7 or 8. I just don't think the level design is as fun as the original. And that could just be because I love, like, the original a lot. And, uh, that's probably just me, maybe. I don't know, if you like Episode 2, can you explain why? Because I really don't get it. It's a little bit more finicky than Episode 1, and I mean that in the very sincere way. Like, however, <clears throat> the map design is really cool. Obviously, there's the obligatory sewer. Um, I'm not really gonna fault anything for this. I love the new zombie designs that get added here. Like, you have those, like, three-armed, like, suicide dudes, or whatever you want to call them. You get these fucking milkman who wants some milk from the milkman's wife's tits. I mean, you know, it's pretty cool. We also get a new Barney variant in this as well. They're the White Barney, which is pretty much the same. It's like... If I had to take a wild guess at what the main difference is, their attack speed is pretty much, like, slightly faster, and that's pretty much it. Snarks are still bullshit, by the way. These, these haven't changed. Um... So yeah, we got the uh, Colonel from Metal Gear Solid as well. He joins the mix in this mod, which is pretty fucking cool. We still have Horny Hot Mom Zombie. She's pretty cool as well. I mean, there's just so many more things. And starting off with the shotgun makes life a hell of a lot better. Um, and like I said, this isn't a bad like chapter. I just think coming off of the first They Hunger, it's just it's not as strong. I, I like it, though. I don't think I have a lot to say negative about this uh trilogy if you will so this is a time puzzle we got to make sure we book our ass faster than booker t into this place and then oh no that sounds like a sound we've heard before it's the bull squid from half-life except it's way easier to kill these actually only take four exactly four pistol shots to kill um so you don't need to waste your shotgun on them normally i've killed that thing way before it ran off that's amazing no there's no bullshit i haven't figured out in this either um but this is a little bit weird, so <clears throat> be careful on that. You can actually get stuck on it. I don't recommend doing that either. Um, I had to have, like, the kill command to make sure I could get through it. Now, I'm just going to let that zombie up there do his thing, wander back and forth a bit, because I don't want... Oh, hell, I might have to throw a grenade in here. That might be what we got to do. I'm not quite sure he's dead. There we go. So let's go ahead and let his jibs do their thing. Oh shit, don't do what I just did there. That's really dangerous. If you get stuck in that corner, there's no way out. You either have to kill your character or you have to, uh, you know, reload your save. So this is a bit weird. I'm not a huge fan of this design. You actually have to go through here twice and do a lap and then this, like, section breaks off. I don't really like that. I think that's kind of shitty, but... I, I understand. It makes you explore more, I suppose. I'm just not a huge fan of it myself. I mean, I would have just made, like, another lever to open the gate. So, of course, we got some more, you know, rifle shells and grenades for our rifle, is what I'm trying to say. Maybe I'm getting delirious from being proto-sick. I don't know. I've met people that said my sick voice sounds sexy, and I just... I think they're kind of right, but, uh... I'm not a fan. I'm trying not to, like, inhale a fucking wad of phlegm in your ears, because I know that's very unattractive. I mean, if you're trying to jack it right now, I'm not sure you're going to be able to finish. You might, until I make an awful, like, Ugh! sound, and then that just, like, completely ruins the mood, unless you're into that. I'm I'm just going to say, I'm going to totally judge you. So, also, you can kill that Barney up there from down where I was at, and that makes this a lot easier. Normally, if you don't, he gets a very good drop on you. And also... We're going to get introduced to doggos. So take another shot for uh, some very rudimentary reskins. They don't have the exact same behavior as Hound Eyes in Half-Life. Like, they don't have, like, the sonic attack. Instead, they're just more like a melee enemy, but they're really fast and hard to shoot. I don't think that's too bad. I mean, it's a clever resource swap, and it's actually pretty good. I like it. I really kind of liken this chapter more to Resident Evil. Um, mainly because, well, you'll see later on, but I don't know, I feel like that was something that was missing in the original They Hunger was dogs. It's just, I don't know what it is about dogs and horror, but they just kind of work together in this weird synergy. And yeah, I actually tried the, uh, hazard course. It doesn't do anything. It's just the vanilla hazard course from Half-Life 1. 
Kind of a damn shame if you ask me, but, you know, I don't know what else to tell you. So, this part, I gotta give it some credit. It is pretty cool. Um, <coughs> however, so there's the uh, bull squids. They take four shots from the handgun to go down, and this is the spot we need to be in. So, this gate is actually inaccessible. We need to push some crates on top of it, which is a bit... Half-Life 2-y, but I'm not 100% sure if Half-Life 2 have been out yet at this point. I don't remember the timelines of things, dude. If it's, like, history you want, uh, I'm not your man. I'm your man for your smooth, sexy gameplay. I'm not your man for those kinds of things. But, uh, yeah, basically, this part is pretty cool. I gotta give, uh, I think it's Kyle. I, I messed it up last time. I'm just gonna say Mankey, because I'm a an old person, and I believe in calling people their last name. So, um... Basically, what Mankey has done is made this really cool, kind of intricate little maze puzzle. I like it a lot. It's really simple, but it's still really cool. So yeah, you can see these are a lot weaker than the vanilla Half-Life Bull Squids. They also shoot a red blood particle out, but when it hits the things, it makes a yellow decal. I'm sure that was just a limitation of the engine. I do this every time I did this. Oh my god. So go ahead and shove that box down. Uh, those are some wonderful physics, aren't they? So, that's just step one. We need to get the other one down as well. Don't need to waste magnum. And just go ahead and shoot that. There'll be a couple of head crabs that also fall in the water too, I'm pretty sure. Or at least they jump into the water at some point. So we need to get this guy. You see what I mean? There's the decal. It's actually red when it comes out, but it's yellow when it splats. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure that's like a hard-coded Half-Life thing. I don't think you can really change that unless you changed every single asset. But... You don't really see bull squids after this section, which is kind of understandable, I guess. They're kind of a sewer critter, I'm guessing, in this game's lore. I don't know, man. I'm not, like, gonna try to dissect the story in this game. There's a German scientist man who looks like he had a stroke, and then there's, like, fat bastard sheriff dude. And, uh, I don't know. That's about as much as I can tell you. All you need to know is there's zombies, they need to die, and everybody else needs to die with them, so... Be careful with this, you can actually kind of fuck this up, and it's a very ungraceful puzzle. But that's that's pretty much how you solve that one, it's not very hard. I actually like the inclusion of that kind of a puzzle in this era of gaming. It's kind of new, if you get what I mean. So, there's nothing really in this area that's worth picking up as well. It's just kind of a time sink, if you ask me. But, uh, yeah, this is going to be the next part. So... This is the shovel. It's it's pretty bad. Um, it's not really any different than the umbrella, as far as I can tell you, so... Just stick to the wrench. It's all you fucking need. It's the edge you want. It's the edge you need. So, yeah. That's gonna be this uh, episode for now, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I sound so, so not good.